All right, you're still watching ways. Um, so <laughs> the limited funding, brain drain, lack of infrastructure and corruption are some of the challenges facing the Nigerian healthcare sector and inhibiting its growth. It is clear that there is a significant variation of, or rather in the quality and ask, um, availability of healthcare services across the country, with urban areas generally having better access to quality care than rural areas. So now, although the Nigerian government has taken several steps to improve the standardization of the health sector, such as developing national standards for healthcare quality and safety, establishing a national accreditation system for hospitals, and developing training programs for healthcare workers, more needs to be done to ensure that all Nigerians have access to quality healthcare services and that medical practitioners are able to work in an enabling environment. So today we're asking, how can we standardize the Nigerian healthcare sector? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us a WhatsApp or SMS um, to 81 a 4663 We'll open our phone lines very shortly, right? But I really want to hear your thoughts. So I did a quick research, or would I say just a quick um, scan through, right? Um, there are a couple of things that happens in our medical facilities, right? And first of all, let us even first put the one that is hot and burning on the table, which is the death of this young boy that is alleged that a nurse had injected him, and afterwards um, he was dead. Two things that stuck out for me, if you take it from the angle of the healthcare sector. What qualifies um, or what, what is, who is supposed to certify, that's the word I'm looking for, that somebody is dead. Do you understand? Um, so can I just pick you up now? Maybe you just passed out. Okay. Or pick up somebody and the person just passed out and just take the person straight to the mortuary or just go and bury, you don't know what I'm saying, or just go and bury the person. Like, is there not supposed to be a standardized process to, uh, what's it called? Um, birth issue and death. Do you understand? Issue a death certificate. And that is a death certificate now that now warrants that body to be put in the ground. Right? So that's one question on the healthcare um, side. Also, if somebody comes into your hospital, I said this yesterday, how, how a friend of mine almost lost her child because of a quack doctor that lost his license in the U.S. and he was able to practice. He's still practicing freely in Nigeria. Right, there is a body that's supposed to regulate, yes. you know, hospitals. But I looked at it. I said, okay, we are over what 200 million people in Nigeria, and you have just about 40,000, 40, 40,000 plus by a fraction, functional hospitals and clinics across 36 states of the Federation of Nigeria. How are you able to cater, right? So if you then put a ratio right, to maybe doctor to patient ratio, yeah. right? They said it's about one to 10,000 patients. More than that. So I mean, like literally, how do we, how do we solve this problem, right? How do we um, ensure that our health care system is standardized? When any, I can wake up tomorrow and just go and say I'm a nurse and inject people, because that is what this, Mobile's case has shown me that anybody can just wake up and say, I'm the nurse and inject. So why are we not mentioning hospitals? Why are we not reporting hospitals? Yesterday, I took a story of somebody that went in for a minor surgery and came out with one kidney. These are things that happens all the time. The young boy that his small intestine went missing. Who have been identified as culprit and who have been arrested? So there's a lot of there's a lot of rot in the healthcare sector, mm -hmm. and when you now hear people saying that okay, the training facilities for doctors saying that they don't even have students to train anymore because students want to live and retire. Why would they not go? Because there's because their there's their hands are tied. Everything there's you know they're overwhelmed with their own task that they're given, and the lack of regulation is really the issue. And I think it goes back to governance. 
I mean, it's the same way with roads, it's the same way with the healthcare facility. I think the only time where we experienced a reasonable, you know, improve or a reasonable process was during COVID. And someone pointed out that that's because the politicians um, they didn't have access to leave the country. So everybody is stuck here. And so they were forced to put down their money and, you know, put things else in place. Some of them are hiring ambulances to stay in their house to and two four seven, you know, and I mean if it's the private healthcare sector, they were happy about that because what well, that's more funds for them, you know, but that so far that's been the only period. We don't have to get to a pandemic. We don't have to get to a point where, you know, everyone is going to die before you know that you should put structures in place that the common man can, you know, go to the hospital and come out alive. My dad went in for what? A blood transfusion that, you know, he literally said to me, oh yeah, I'll come back. Like it just takes a couple of hours, you know, they do it and then you return back to the house. And it was a big deal. Is it that you didn't check the blood group of the person? Why would you issue a different um, blood pack that is not in the same group to someone and you expect the, the body not to react? So why, why do we know our blood groups in it's the first again. place? Calm down. What was the story? The story was he went in for a blood transfusion and he was reacting to the blood and he died. What hospital? It's in my estate, a general estate, and they're still functioning. There was no what what are you what what can we possibly do? It was it was totally absurd. It was total because as at the time I went to see him, after a while, you know, my mom had told me, oh, he's reacting to the blood, and I just couldn't wrap my head around it to say I don't understand. There's medical data before you issue blood, so why you know? And if you notice that old oh, person reacting to blood, why wasn't he stopped at that point? Well, you know, at that age, there's. There was, you know, How little... How long ago was this? This was seven years ago. Mm. And there's, there was little, you know, I could do. All I know was I just got a call in the morning because my mom slept in the hospital. That, oh, your dad is dead. Da, da, da. And I was like, okay. And, you know, reading up a blood transfusion really is not that it's much not a of deal. a big deal. Like, it's not. It's not a big deal. It's not. And there's sev- even after that, there's several other cases that I've heard that people die from blood transfusion. Like, I mean, it's, it's totally absurd. So the doctors, are they inadequate? Are they overwhelmed? You know, um, the WHO ratio as well as compared to other countries, I mean, outside the country is like 1 to 600. And in Nigeria, it's 1 to 40-something thousand. Thank I God. mean, how does it work? I have doctors that live with me, and trust me, they are exhausted. And they're exhausted and they're enjoying the pain, telling me, girl, we're living the country. These are, uh, they schooled abroad, schooled in Ukraine, you know, they're, but then they're, they're just, they're overworked, they're underpaid, you know, they can't even afford like a basic good structure for themselves. So, I mean, it's like there's there's nothing looking for them to look forward to, you know, being here, which well, is really sad. I mean, it's really sad because, okay, if we take it back to the young doctor that died, you know, that even brought up the conversation, he passed out. Like, how can you be working for 72 hours? Straight. So even if the doctor They're did no not magicians. pass out, <laughs> this is the case where you see that doctor forgot a needle inside yes. somebody's yes. body. Because yes. even yes. if he did not die... Yes. Right? You're How can you member. allow someone work for 72 hours stretch? Right? Of course, he's a human being. And you see, this is the thing that sometimes, like, it just breaks my heart. Because I, I just wish, you know, we are complaining and we're shouting about a death of a young boy. Right? The Mubad boy. But it's a, everything that happened to that boy. You can clearly see that it's a result of a failed system because if we had a situation where nigerians young nigerians had other options they had good options so it is not just i'm not just uh, what's it called um i'm not just uh, picking entertainment just because i see that that is the only way there are options right i can use my brain to make money i can go to school i make money i can use my hand work and make money but if you check every young person now, even a two-year-old toddler will tell you that I want to sing. 
I want to be an entertainer. And this is what is happening now. There's a proliferation of what's it called? Vulgar music in the minds of these young people that is feeding them. Talking about sex, about drugs, about occultism um, and all of that. And we have allowed all these things over the years. And you not expect that the system will be better. So when we talk about the government and we're telling them that, guys, this thing, in the end, it will harm all of us. All of us. Right? This is what we're saying. Why do we need to be doing candlelight procession? Right? When in the first place, this person should not even be if dead. there was a system, why would you just bury someone... Even the bending of his head in the coffin, I don't understand. No, my, my, I mean, look at that body that was taken out. Because I was saying that what body is supposed to, uh, I think they said it's the National Census uh, Commission or so, that is supposed to certify, like issue that death certificate. So, like, literally, does it mean that anybody can just wake up and say somebody died? Abroad, eh, your dog, God help you. Do you understand? Very true. Anything happen even to true. your the animals. I'm not talking about true. human beings. Yeah. Let yes. anything happen. Do you know that my sister raised chicken? She raised chicken in um, in France, right? And she said that she cannot slaughter that chicken. She can't slaughter that chicken. If she wants to slaughter that chicken, mm. you understand? Say, oh, Christmas don't come. Make I just. She can't slaughter that chicken. She has to take the chicken to the to, to the butchery. Those are the people that are authorized. Do you understand? To slaughter the chicken. Because even the, down to the people that will pick up your trash, if they see, um, what's it called? Feather inside there, yeah. you will come and answer question. Even leaves, right? When they prune their whatever, their grass, they're not allowed to do anything to it. They're supposed to come and pick it up. You can't burn it. You can't, like, literally, these are people that understand life because even in that leaf there's life yeah and they value life and they they, they hold life there no not to talk of nigeria human. human beings i have a sister-in-law you know every time i talk about it it's so painful because i remember then my son is 17 i was breastfeeding when they called us that she had been rushed to the hospital she was trying to have a baby and we rushed down to the hospital and everything even while breastfeeding i was able to give her because i can donate blood to anybody I was, I, they, they, they took out some blood and all of that. You know, they had done the surgery and everything. I keep on saying that it is a neglect. And because we don't even report these cases. Do you understand? Because now, your father's death, nobody took it to the authorities. And the hospital is just still roaming free. Yeah, my mom had just said My sister-in-law died. So after the surgery, they, they took her to the ward. I mean, the room. Yeah. Her private room. Yeah. So we were exhausted. Because we were there overnight, mm -hmm. and you know, I was breastfeeding. I said, Okay, you know what? Let's just quickly rush over to the palms, quickly eat something, then come back. Because the hospital is in VR here, right? On getting there, while we were at the palms, I was so restless. I don't know what happened, but I was restless. I kept on telling them, Hurry up, hurry up, and eat. Let's, let's go back. By the time we got back, I just heard her breathing. Somebody that just came out of a surgery, right? They took out a, a preterm baby. You didn't even put any like monitoring, um, what's it called, to monitor her vitals. I just heard her breathing. I just said, ah, why is she breathing funny? I kept on calling her name, are you okay, are you okay? I don't know what's, something just said lift. Do you understand, I was asking her, is she cold? So I was lifting the, because they had covered her up. When I lifted that black, uh, duvet, it was blood all over the place. So all the blood that they had transfused, everything was just all over on the bed. She was soaked in the pool of the blood. That was how I started screaming and the nurse, and that was the last I saw her. She died. But you see, the thing is, everybody's in a state of mourning. Nobody questions. Yes. Yeah. And that's why I'm happy with the movement of saying, what happened? Do you understand? Because who gives give you the audacity? Just give us a crappy story. Do you understand? Just, who you know, gives you the audacity to bury? Like literally, if, eh, if every hospital is charged with that responsibility of giving a an autopsy report for every death. Maybe they'll be a lot more careful. And you'll not be having a situation where you overwork your doctors. Mm. You will not you will not pay them, you know, appropriately. Yeah, but the, the, even the funding from the government is not I'm just, enough. I'm just frustrated. The government the funding from the government is not sufficient. 
So you have general hospitals that are, you know, pretty, I mean, it might not be the best, but, you know, you have very good doctors there and they can't handle the amount of people they're getting. Mm. You, I'm sure you know what it is to get even, maybe you want to do something there, you know, you probably have to know somebody to be able to, because the line and the queue is... <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if we just tuned in, we're having a conversation around standardizing our healthcare sector. Um, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 Our phone line is now open. The number to call, I don't know why it's not displaying, but the number to call is 07025 That's the number to call. Remember, you can join the conversation. Just turn up the volume of whatever device it is you're watching us from. I'm sorry if you don't have the number. We can't, I don't know why it's not displaying. All right, that's the number to call. So, I mean, I was saying before the break that I will give you an experience I had with the yeah. government hospital. So something happened and um, someone was hit and, you know, broken leg and all of that. And by the time we got to the hospital, I kid you not, I saw nurses coming out and issuing drips inside um, the TikTok, the, tuk -tuk, the keke ma ma napep. They were infusing drip lines, you know, because there were people all over the ground. So even these facilities, right? I mean, we have a lot of abandoned buildings in Nikoi that you just see high rise, multiple high rise. Nobody's living there. And you see seized by Amcon and all of that. Why can't we convert this, some of these places into healthcare facilities? Do you understand? It's not the issue of, it's not the funding that is the problem, Mary. I think it is more of the, what's it called? It is more of the will to do it. Let's take our first caller for the evening. Good evening. Hey, what's up now? I day over, no day. Be coming down, you allow this country if you follow you, eh? You don't be survivable. I'm telling you. Just smile. We are not up to pilot in this country as well for the Air Force. Amen. You see, the issue is that a lot of things are on cruise in this country. And if you start to bring out even the leave called Nigeria, sometimes it will affect the, the mental of Lagata. So forget your life. But that way, first talk, say, if you want to keep out, you will take it to the abattoir. I'm, I'm being honest with you, youngest old man. I'm not going to buy the price to give out again. I'm not going to buy the price to give out again. I'm not going to buy the price Ah, that that youngest old man. Like. Youngest old man. Now, place where we say yes, they, they, they care about human life. I be life, not be mm. human. Whether na animal, whether na plant, whether na, na mm. human being, they care about life mm. in itself. Not be place where no yes, care about I life. Understand. In a, in, a, in a country where it has been designed to survive, the design of Nigeria is not expected to survive. In fact, we are surviving out of, you understand, favor from our endurance. You understand? We don't, they don't design us more survive. A lot of things are not in place. Nothing is even in place. Mm. So those countries have been designed to survive, grow, build, expand, help others to grow too. But in our case, we have been designed to come up scatter, destroy ourselves, and end up zero. So we are trying to survive because naturally, we are people that can take in more than bring out little. You understand? So that is our nature. You understand? So forget about us in terms of all those kind of uh, lifestyle. But for me, I understand that the fundamental of whatever you are talking about comes from the government itself. What is the system? What is the ratio to a doctor to patient? Well, there is nothing you can do that somebody can walk more than he can. A doctor should not even see more than six people in a day. But when I'm going to hear it's one doctor to 200, I went to a general hospital, my dear, I cried. Now, Zilla is the three people. They brought a truck full of passengers, that's the uh, victims, and that is Nicola. Now, Zilla is standing the three people. Doctor there every day because the doctor got tired. He went to rest because he walked through the night. In a whole full, uh, um, I can't remember, it was the only one doctor did. And that doctor, nine days, nine days, have his three words. Hmm. Imagine that. So, and, and when you go to the private one, it's even worse. Now, one doctor be the anthropologist. Now, one doctor be the pediatrician. Hmm. Now, one doctor be the everything you go to, but even if you get, even dentist, now one doctor. 
So a lot of things are not working in this country, but we have been designed to exist. So basically, we will exist no matter what. Mm. However, the system is not happy. So this will complain the end of my heart. When it takes off with the pipe load, the complainer who will survive, trust me, no matter what. But the better Nigeria will come one day. Whether we do or we don't do, but we need to tell the story one day. Amen. I guess of God. Thank you, youngest old man. See Mary mm -hmm. smiling. <laughs> Ah, it's just so sad. Like, I, I can't even imagine, honestly. I, I, I said this thing yesterday that the faith I have about sickness, God will not let me to my hosp my back to be on the hospital bed. It's the only two times I've a, slept overnight in the hospital, it's not a it is to just go and pop out a baby and come out. Is that anything that will make me sleep in, in the hospital, God will not let me see it. And even the, even in the, this the, country. Even the private, the private hospitals are freaking... No, but it's not even about the expense now. Okay, the sister in law that I told you that, do you, know, do you know what the bill was as a then? This is um, about 16 years ago, right? Do you know what the bill, the, the bill was? You know? And not only, it's not even about the expenses. It's the fact that nobody even checks. Yeah. Do you understand? It's just like the, the problem we have with education. We do not have standardized private schools because right now, even the government, even if they say they want to shut down those substandard schools, can they... Can they absorb the students that will be hanging from, from the shutting down of those schools? It's the same thing with hospitals. So I don't understand how a government will continue to promise the same thing for over, decades. Over, over. Like, are you guys not even ashamed? Are you not tired? You go to all these countries, you see the standards, you go and use their facilities. Okay. Can you not say that? Let it be a thing of pride that it is in my own country that these things are happening. No! How, how to eat. I, I, I promised how myself to, I was not going to... How to eat for just... themselves. I mean, um, I don't know. It's a very sad situation, to be honest. And every time we have to talk about the government, I feel very reluctant about it because it's like, we come the out same here... same thing! We come out here, we let me take, let me take, Let me take Loma. It's the same it? thing we'll say, we'll keep Loma, repeating ourselves Loma. for decades. For so goodness sake. Are you guys not tired? Loma, are you there? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Good evening. Go ahead. Uh, see, Nigeria can only capitalize in a time larger data if we bring back the spirit of the spirit which we attack Ebola. If you remember when Ebola came into this country, mm. You see, every sector, one sector, they stood on their ground mm. and make sure that the Poland did not split the whole Nigeria or make one the whole Nigeria. If we can bring one that thing, but if we are to go by the way the president politicians are doing, we will not go anywhere. They don't bring back the spirit we use to fight against the Poland. By so doing, people will know the importance of our healthcare sector. Those people that, they, 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 the professionals who are supposed to mind this place will be put in place so that at the end of the day, we will not be suffering. Look at somebody will get sick. Before you know it, they will continue running around. Running, running the step of a baroni onto somebody that. And sometimes these days, our doctors are no more who made like before. Our nurses are no more who made like before. Before, a doctor would, even before, they think, once you are sick, you go to a doctor. Don't a word that one part of the man will get killed. But this time around, a doctor can remove something from your body, do something, don't do it. Some certain things that are in woman. So we can only bring, we can guide our health sector if we bring back the spirit of woman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Loma. You see, when he was talking about Ebola, <laughs> <laughs> you know that Ebola is a big mass sickness. You understand? You know, because they knew that, come, if we don't tackle this thing, we're all. The same know, thing with COVID. The same thing with it was COVID. The same thing during COVID. Mm. Do you understand? And because they couldn't. 
the people who have money or people who have access to fly out and give themselves they better, couldn't fly they out. couldn't fly out so it's either you you want to die or you fix the problem, fix this problem mm. you know and everybody was on their toes so if it can work you know in a pandemic that way i believe that if they actually do put effort, if they put you know the right structure and funding into it, we will get better. But beyond it's not going to change overnight, though. Mm. But I mean, beyond yes. that, Mary, do you think that the government, if they put up a law, because we are trying to find a solution to mm. how we can standardize our healthcare sector, if they put up a law that says that you cannot travel out of this country as a government of, I think they've said that and they've thrown it out several times. You understand? Uh. If we put that law, no, 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 as a serving government official okay not us waiting for sign my money now but the, as long as the, you're a the government leader at the top no that's what i'm saying to you now as <laughs> it's not possible <laughs> It's not possible. <laughs> but they threw it out. It's not. No, because you know what you said now. Because there was a lockdown, you couldn't go anywhere. So it's either you fix the problem or we all die inside of it. So they now decided, you know what, we have to quickly fix this problem. The same thing with Ebola. Right? <laughs> but it's just really painful that it, it means that it means my life is not safe. Yeah. I can't even like literally and what is the body of the Medical Association of Nigeria, Medical and Dentist Dentist Association of Nigeria? What are they doing? Do you understand? Why are we not hearing that they just shut down this hospital, they just shut down that hospital? Why are we just having issues? Look at the, the doctor that died in an elevator that they have talked yeah. about several times that they have been complaining yeah. about that elevator not being functional. Till tomorrow now, we don't know what the, what the situation has is. Has it been fixed? Do you know, is has it, it even a fixing? You know, you know, would it not happen again? Because there's, when they are, there's no story. It's just swept under the carpet. When they are charged thing. heavy fines, Mary, Right, yeah. heavy fine. They will sit up. Now imagine if they say there's a complainant, um, like for instance, if you've been, if there's been a wrong in the hospital and you suspect foul play, maybe negligence or something, right? Because I mean, when I had my child, I, I say this every time. I had the best gynecologist. I can't. I don't know where that doctor is. She was a female doctor, Doctor mm. Ido. She was one that delivered my first son. By the time she delivered the baby, right, she then noticed that. Yes, there was normally the bleeding, bleeding, but she didn't notice there was a, another kind of bleeding. Mm, and she, you know, because yeah. it was my first child and all of that, apparently Alpha gave me a tear. The, I had a cut that she made herself, but I had a tear. Imagine if she was not observant. So when she, was, just... done, yes, when she was done suturing, this is where you now hear cases of a woman being pregnant the first time, no problem, she's jumping up and down. By the time she's having a second child, she's losing the baby because mm. the cervix cannot hold so, the child. Yeah. You hear stories like that. Yeah. But it was a negligence on somebody's part. You know, that thing would have healed itself. But she said, no, that if I was going to have a second baby, it would pose a threat to, this, to, to um, taking that Holding, child to full yeah. term. So she then called my gynecologist, Dr. Shinaki. And he now came and said, really, what she observed was true. And so he now did another suturing at the inner whatever cervix. I'm just saying to you that we have fantastic people, pe uh, people. Doctors. fantastic doctors, fantastic nurses, right? But no matter how great those nurses or doctors are, if they don't have the right equipment to work, yeah, you understand? You are just like literally setting them up for, for failure. Well, imagine if she had, you know, spoken to the gynecologist and he shrugged it off because, you know, maybe oh, it's just, you know, it will heal. Yes, it will heal, and that's how. But what will she do now? She will just keep quiet and say, okay, well, she has said done her part. So it's another thing to complain and be heard after complaining, and it's another thing to you know totally just keep quiet which is sad because is he had to take us crying out for justice before they found the nurse that gave the injection like meaning if truly nothing was said she would just be going about her, her a business. lot of people have been killed nothing happened mm -hmm. do you understand literally right you're supposed to be shaking you're supposed to be, they're supposed to strip you of your licenses. That's why you see a lot of these I just got back doctors. Most of them can no longer practice where they are coming from. Mm. Do you understand? There was a med, and you will be shocked that the things that they did, 
right? It's so, it's so little. It, so much. You in this Nigeria, you say, ah, ah, I go, you don't Do you understand? Like, kill yeah. kill yeah. yeah. That's that yeah. Hebrew's English, I say, Yoruba yeah. language. Yes. You know, <laughs> like, literally, ah, what did I do? What are you, you know? Yeah, just this is how we will take it. Yeah. But you see, there, they don't take it. Because if you have, if you can do something small, then and it's not like there is no medical um, corruption. There are no corrupt practices abroad. But the only thing is that there is a there is a penalty for it. So if you are doing, if you are if you are trying to open anybody, you must make sure. You know, every look and cranny the way you have private schools inside three bedroom flats now every look and cranny inside you understand you just look there's a hospital you just say private yes now school in, three in three bedroom flat you see private complete private school in a three bedroom flat <laughs> you know <laughs> so I, and i think I, and i think it it, it it might be funny mary but you see this matter of healthcare eh, is is not funny to me because i have lost too many people in this matter do you understand is it the ones that are misdiagnosed? You're supposed to be treating the person for, for cancer. You say it was stomach ache. Later, the person dies and say, ah, oh, it was cancer. And nobody does anything about it. So younger doctors now are seeing that this is not going to work for me. Exactly. I was talking to a medical doctor. In fact, interestingly, I met her the day that accident happened. The day I, the the the, the so car the, accident. Okay. So that was when we met, we connected, and we now found that oh, she also was born and bred in Kaduna. Okay. Her mom actually knew my mom. You know, it was just a funny thing. I called her that. Ah, please, we need a medical doctor. I think about it. was it last month or so. <laughs> By the time she, she said, ah, as I'm talking to you, I just landed Canada. <laughs> <laughs> man down, man down. And the former minister for labor, uh, Chris Ngige, was saying that if they like, let them be going, that uh, whatever. Now, see what the medical uh, college is talking about. Losing people, they don't even have people to train. It's, it's really bad. You know? All of them are so, going. All of them are going. It is well. I don't know if you have messages, but I think the, the conversation is not something that needs to stop. If anybody is around the Oni uh, Kuala Park now, there is a procession going. But beyond that procession, I think the government, right? I want to see sincerity in that autopsy. I don't know if there are like standard. Like, so this is what breaks my heart, right? With corruption, you don't even know who to trust. You don't know whether the doctor that the, that, that is or the whatever that will go and examine. What do they call them? The forensic people that are going to one, they, that one whether they will pay, they will bribe that one quiet. to keep quiet. Do you understand? Like literally, I can trust. My my younger sister went through a a a major, you know, major health whatever in a, 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 in this her lifetime. I you know I keep on thanking God that she was not in this country mm. because I'm, I kid you not, even where she was. Even the nurses, with all the medical facilities and everything they had, they were still afraid. Do you understand? It was after everything had come down that they now called the husband that, ah, when they were willing your wife to this place, that, in fact, eh, they were already saying that. Because normally, it is so intense that if they take 10 people in there, maybe it's only one person that comes across. That is how critical the situation was. But you see, it is careful observance that makes these kind of things change. Yeah. That a doctor pays that extra attention. The doctor has the equipment to work. So we can't be using mouth to be saying better healthcare facility. And look at the promise. The same promise for years since I was a child. I'm almost 40. Since I was a child. The same story. Too bad. I don't know what to say. Too bad. And I really hope we can do better. I hope we, we do. We can only hope. I hope we Which do. Is sad. Which is sad. It's really sad. It's really, really well, I sad. I need to know what bodies to call. Do you understand? I need to know what bodies to call. Like, literally, if there's negligence in the hospital or something happens and somebody dies, do you just let it go and say, oh, it was God or whatever? Or should we start to actually just say, you know what, let us just go and document? Because you're supposed to document these yeah. things, right? Because, I mean... If you're, if, you're, if you're counting how many people, if there's census for how many people are in a country, then you should have census of the number of deaths as well, you know, so. I'm telling you because it, it's, it's something that is, so let me, let me, they said, they said data obtained from health 
um, facilities. Okay, this is this one. I, I have read this one. I'm trying to find the one I saw for death certificates. Okay. Right, where they say that for every death and every um, my my network is a bit slow. For every death and yeah, this is it. The National Populations Commission. That's the word. Okay. Is a special body in Nigeria that registers death and birth and issues respective certificates. Every death and every birth in the country are eligible for registration. Hmm. So if somebody dies, what should be the new rule? I get it that there are religious undertones to this thing. So for instance, if it's a Muslim, you know, if it is like same day and maybe it's in the morning by evening, the person is already in the ground. But they can have expedited, do you understand? Expedited, um, what's it called? Expedited, um, 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 what's it called? Certifications. Maybe so that, do you understand, by the hospital, or... well, even at like that, even if so, so, and this should be only upon satisfactory, um, what's it called, satisfactory conditions that the person did not die out of negligence or whatever. If it is maybe like natural cause, or the person was ill, you know, the, what, like literally there are some things you know that, okay, yes, it's time for the person to go and rest. But if there is any suspicion that this death could have been avoidable, regardless of the religion, I feel like, Every dead body right now, you understand? People should start demanding that an autopsy be carried out. Let's have a proper report that says, okay, this is the actual cause of the death. Let's not just keep assuming, because you know why? If we start to put data to these things, maybe, maybe we might just find a solution to change, the, to, 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 to solve the problem. But if there's no data and every time somebody just dies, okay, just bury, up, bury and move on. We'll continue to have these things repeatedly. You know, very true. And then, um, like you mentioned earlier, when um, a person dies, the family members and those around are usually in a state of mourning. So, it, you know, that's trying to heal from it, you know, and on knowing the country that you're in, it just makes it a bit, you know, difficult, mm. you know, to gather the strength and actually fight. I think I was watching a movie, it's called The Steel, um, something about the black people, she sent her son and he was killed, you know, and she went to court. She didn't win the case, you know, because of the whole white supremacy and everything, but she was brave in her period of, so the, her mourning was what gave her strength, you know, to say, I will fight. So it, ta it takes a lot, you know, for you to turn your sorrow into strength to, to fight for a just cause, mm. you know. And I'm sure, like we're saying, this mobile story, the, the parents are not even the ones fighting. Ah, no, 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 Do you no, understand? No. It's, the, the it's, father, the, it's the outsiders the, no, around. No, but really, the father should be lucky that I am nowhere near related to him. Because the first person that I would have put in jail is the it's father. It's him. Like, literally, how can your child pass? And you were, you even wanted to bury, if not for the, the, the according to the report, the, the chief yes. in, the, in the local area, the ballet, that said, no, 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 you can't bury it till tomorrow. How can you want to bury immediately? And now look at what they is happening with fresh blood. They gave you money for coffin, and you couldn't even get the coffin the copies, right. The proper size. Uh -uh. No, no. We will, we, I pray, because see, if this matter is resolved, it does not only stop at the music industry, it will trickle down to even the health sector. That yeah. hospital, they would arrest the doctor, arrest everybody there. So that tomorrow, when you, when you want to hire a nurse, you not go and hire a quack nurse. Or you, know, you will not allow somebody, because again, it might be that somebody just impersonated a nurse and went there and did it, whatever. Very true. If, it, if it was a crime in, in yeah. itself. Well, we ran out of time, but thank you so much, Mary. I think we had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll start to see real changes in our healthcare sector. Before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. A standardized healthcare sector is not where all Nigerians, regardless of is one where all Nigerians, regardless of income or location, can expect to receive the same high quality um, care. And this was from an anonymous source. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. Mm.